Welcome. This video is part of a series of videos that focuses on cabling. This video will assist you in cable routing considerations when planning cabinet layout and cabinet routing of a drive system. One of the more challenging issues to troubleshoot in an electrical system are associated with voltages and currents coupling from one wire to another. Unpredictable control behavior can occur on an electrical system that has poor cable isolation. Taking steps to minimize noise coupling from one electrical system to another at the design phase can greatly reduce or eliminate problems in the future. To address these concerns, this video focuses on steps to be taken on how to contain common mode current, best panel installation practices, and other installation considerations. Drives, in general, are a significant source of noise to any electrical system. In other videos in this series, we discuss what common mode current is and how to configure the drive to best contain common mode current. Those videos are designed to help understand the power jumpers within the drive and how this can help reduce noise related issues in your electrical system. Taking these steps will greatly reduce the effects of common mode current in a facility by routing the current back to the source. Please see the description for links to these videos. Once this noise is routed back to the drive, it is equally important to minimize the chance of this current coupling onto sensitive devices within the same enclosure. Containing common mode current begins with good grounding and bonding practices. The motor should be bonded to the drive ground and the drive ground should be connected to the electrical system ground. If the drive is kept in an enclosure that is painted on the inside, be sure to scrape off the paint at the ground connection point to ensure a solid ground within the enclosure. Once the drive has been installed with all of the proper grounding considerations, proper panel layout needs to be considered. Always follow proper spacing requirements as stated in the installation or user manual to allow for proper airflow and cooling. Aside from this, a good layout plan starts by putting all the power input and output wire entry on the same side of the panel and placing sensitive equipment on the other side of the panel. The panel layout shown allows common mode noise current to flow away from sensitive electronic equipment and help prevent electromagnetic interference issues. Separating sensitive electronics from VFDs in the enclosure minimizes communication, analog, and control wiring noise issues. Once the equipment is mounted inside the enclosure, Care should be made while routing the cables within the cabinet. The table above is given in publication Drives-IN001. This table takes into account the voltage level and type of signal that the cable is being used for. To use the table, find the wiring level associated with each cable under consideration and find the distance recommended between the cables. For example, a power wire, which would be considered a wiring level 1, should be routed no closer than 9 inches in a cable tray or free space to a 24 volt DC logic wire, which would be considered wiring level 6. In many cases, devices such as drives do not allow for these spacing restrictions to be met. In these cases, route the wire as far as possible and try to maintain these distances as best as you can. In some cases, it may be extremely difficult 
or impossible to meet the recommended spacing considerations. In these cases, it is recommended to use grounded shielding devices within the enclosure, such as the Panduit shield shown, or using shielded or armored shielded cables. If cables of different wiring levels must cross, do this at a 90 degree angle. This will minimize any induced voltages from one cable to the other. Large inductive loads, like mechanical brakes, solenoids, or contactors, are known to create voltage transients in the electrical system when power is applied to them. These voltage transients have been known to damage sensitive equipment or negatively affect their behavior. Be sure to provide surge suppression on these devices to minimize their effect on other devices. When routing the wire, avoid creating a loop that could act as an antenna. Route the wire together or use twisted pair wire. Also, take care not to nick the insulation and verify there is no insulation damage when pulling the wire through a tight location. For more detailed information on wiring guidelines for a drive system in an industrial environment, please see the manual Wiring and Grounding Guidelines for Pulse Width Modulated Drives. The link for this manual can be found in the description.